So, uh, oh, welcome God. to No Shame, episode three. Um, powered by Lemar. Here we are in SPG uh, Dublin 24 in the, the Lemar studio, of course. And today we have a special guest, absolute legend. Oh, you've been when we started this, I wanted to get this going on first. The, the original OG of <laughs> MMA on the Rowdy Roddy. What's the story? What's well, the crack? Pleasure, Paddy, as always. I love, lo- I love, I love the intro, man. Yeah, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta get a big fat head there when I get an intro like that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, delighted to be on and uh, delighted to get down and have a chat, man. It's been a while. Daily, man. And as I said, the idea of getting you on here was to tell a few of the tales, go through a few of the tales on the way up because uh, a lot, a lot of pe- people that 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 be listening to this uh, are MMA fans. Fans, there's, there's all sorts of different fans, yeah, mm. crazy fans. There's L and 60 year old, uh, years of age that run shops, you know. <laughs> but, um, well, Roddy is uh, the, one of the original kind of pioneers of Irish MMA. That when I started, uh, when I started, Roddy was already in the club, had his blue gloves. He was a little bit younger. Yeah. He was, uh, and he kind of he was the one that welcomed me and inspired me into MMA. Me and Dave Donnelly walked into the club, and That's it was. Right. Uh, well, we'll go through it now in a second. But uh, on Roddy had a, a huge career in MMA. Um, not only that, he became one of the most um, known pad men in the world for, mm. for being Conor McGregor's not uh, pad man. He's been involved in so many huge fights, uh, the Aldo fights, the Nate Diaz fights, the breakdowns, the, the, the strategies, and of course, the, the Floyd Mayweather fight, which was the biggest Floyd of the century. So, not bad for a little chat from Ballymoon. I know, yeah, <laughs> man, Jesus, some fucking chance. That's what I'll say, man. Um, to be honest, yeah, I, I'm just, uh, look, you know, I'm from Ballymore I didn't come from much, like, as you said, most of us, uh, and um, so, uh, yeah, I'm just happy to be on this crazy journey, and uh, obviously, you know, people work very hard, and I've worked very hard to get where I am, but... It's been a crazy road, and uh, I'm 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 just embracing every moment. It, uh, do you know what? And as you say, like working hard. I when it went, like, I think this year is kind of where it's all at starting kind of happening for you a little bit more. Mm. Like um, I know you're working with, with, with Gym Shark now. You're an athlete representing under them as well. Your own gym as well is starting to kind of fluctuate with numbers. Your 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 Roddy's vlogs. Your, geez, what else have you got going, Roddy? Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm. I, I, Jesus, man, I'm chancing my arm at everything. To be totally <laughs> honest, yeah. Three ten things, two week come off. Yeah, I, I give it all a go. To be honest, and I mean. I, I, got that from you know doing doing mixed martial arts the thing is like um when you when you compete in bjj or mixed martial arts and and people are trying to choke you and trying to kill you (laughs) taking a risk you know doing a vlog or doing a little video it's it's a lot easier like so you know the fact that i've i've came through mixed martial arts um i have no real fear in trying that so i'm doing vlogs i'm doing techniques of the week and I'm setting up other businesses abroad and, and stuff like that, so I'm, I'm flat out and I'm yeah. and I'm enjoying it. Oh. I'm the, you know, I'm delighted for you because as the kind of swell came up in a wave, mm. that your name wouldn't have been at the forefront of that that kind of swell. But mm. to me, it was always like, who the fuck are they talking about? The Roddy in that situation, but, and and the idea was you were happy for everybody that was making at that time. Where mm. a lot of people can be like better at that time, but you kind of held it, the, the the ropes on, and now. You are getting exactly what yeah, you deserve. Yeah, but you know yourself, Paddy. That, that that time in the gym, you you could not be happy for the the team around us. We we had something very special. Yeah. Like, and I I talk about this, and I've done interviews. What we had in that gym in in um, in in Longwood was was you know something very very rare, very special. Every one of us, every one of us got behind each other, and yeah. if any of us doing well. Everyone was just so overwhelmed and so happy for them. So for me, I was at the forefront, and you know, I I, I was fighting on the European scene, and I was I was fighting professional before any of us. But um, you know, you all looked up to me. I I tried my best to give everybody as much help as I could, and then to see you guys go in and and, and smash it, you know, all over the world as well. I I, I took a bit of pride in that as well. So. It was um, it was unbelievable, and I, I, I just I'm happy that I was part of it. And do you know what? But that I, I, I say things like that as well, and I'm, I'm, I just cannot be better for people that are doing well and mm. stuff like that. I just I'm happy, but I think that's something to do with the way you were raised as well. And but like, it's mad to say that not everyone is like that. Yeah. Like not everyone can be happy for their their next door neighbors doing well. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, and and for me, like I, I, you know, you know. I stopped training or I, I stopped fighting for various reasons, that, and 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 that kind of. That, that that killed me for a while, you know what I mean? And for the first six or seven months, when I when I announced my retirement, for this first seven or eight months, I was bitter. Not bitter about what everybody else was doing, just bitter that that my I lost my shot. Like, do you know what I mean? Over, yeah. But um, but you know you can sit and dwell and shit like that, and and let it eat you up and become a bitter person, or you can you can look at the road and you can see what other 
other routes are available and you can pick one and, and that's what I done and then coaching became my 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 main priority and um you know what it, you know for most part I've been very successful as a coach as well yeah, so yeah. I I'm yeah I just feel that when 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 a door shuts you got to you, you got to find another way and, and and figure it out and go or you can just sit behind the door and be a little whinge bag and give out and everyone uh, do you know what and that's it, the, the whinging mentality uh, yeah. you know as they would say but uh, like that that's not in you definitely yeah. not, I don't think it is in you we actually uh, I know John couldn't instill that and the, the environment instilled the idea of like get up get yeah. up and go again you know what I mean and I know your own father would instill that your own family would have instilled yeah. that I know my granddad did it and me and they, they were probably the, the type same people you know what I mean they were in the, the same yeah. army they, yeah. they went to the Congo together they, yeah, they did that's things right, like that, yeah. which is a mad little situation it's as well crazy like but it, it, most definitely like you know whatever my dad's mentality definitely brushed off of me like my dad was just a grafter that's just it a grafter didn't complain walked walked every day of his life like you know what I mean walked right up until he you know till his 70s like do you know what I mean yeah. driving trucks or he was in the army and you know as a young kid going over somewhere where they knew nothing about and then you know going through what went over in the Congo like and, and which is insane as a 19 year old but that, that, that yeah. instilled something in you and some of that DNA brushed off in me and gave me a little bit of a fight and you know if he can go through stuff like that surely surely I can go through you know what I've went through. Do you know what I mean? D- have you seen that? Like, um, so the, the team we're referring to is um, is the Battle of uh, Jabberville, the siege yeah, of Jabberville. Yeah, is, um, I, I, think, I don't even know what I'm saying, or right. Yeah, yeah. You know, I only watched the movie, like you know, and 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 to see what went on over there. And my dad was was at um, he was at the 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 Battle of the Bridge or something. They, they, they were, were fighting for the bridge. They okay, for, now it's they, not in the movie, but it kind it, of is actually yeah, a little yeah, bit of it. Little that's bit, the part where my granddad was yeah. stuck as well. So. You know, I, I knew not my dad used to tell me these stories about all of this, and I was like, um, yeah, whatever that, yeah, like. But then when you when I went, I started to go to the the Veterans Association there on um, Arbor Hill and listen to some of the stories, what they used to say about what went on over there. And I, you know what, I got a a huge sense of pride to, to find out what me, me me dad actually did. You know what I mean? And uh, it was one of the only like. He wore, like he, he finished he left the left the army and then went driving trucks and on. He done that for years and as I said he grafted. I don't think he particularly liked driving the trucks, but he done it because he needed to. But then he went back and joined the Veterans Association and it was the one time in his last years that he um he, he just came out of a shell again. He became he, he he found his friends, old friends that he hasn't seen in years and he found that common ground that they all went through and he used to go in there every day and it was brilliant, you know what I mean? But he was a grafter, a hard worker, and 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 he was dogged, and uh, I think definitely think some of that brushed off into me. You know what I mean? Definitely, so. it has to. I, mm. And the, the idea, I know the man liked the whiskey as well. No, <laughs> yeah, and I, I like the whiskey the myself, <laughs> Jesus. I'm every bar of them, God love me. Yeah. You know, getting all so, uh, so I'll fly back real quick. So when we start, when we first started, we started in the Rack Hill gym. So the Rack Hill gym yeah. would have been the gym in the back now. You would like saying you you would have been growing up in Ballymun. You would have been mm. traveling from from that time. You would have been, you would travel from Ballymun to yeah. Rakhill. Like yeah. that's a that's a huge difference. So even before we go there, growing up in Ballymun as a young kid, did that give you that rough edge as well? As yeah. like like the people. I'm not that. I'm not a bogey person. It wasn't. I wasn't a bogey. I was, no, I was, yeah, I was yeah. quite a decent lad. Like you know. Now I hung around with a lot of lads, and they're all they're all they were all messers, and we got into a lot of trouble growing up. Like yeah. as you do. You know, you know, just that's just, just on the estate, just isn't it? on like the estate, messing, you know, bikes and cars, and, and, bricks, and, and horses. yeah, <laughs> exactly, it, the, all the usual stuff. Um, but you know, the the the, the flats where where I used to hang around, the Balcourt's flats were, were you know synonymous with what with with you know drug dealing and and robbed cars and 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 gaffs being raided and <laughs> but you know what, it was just a mad experience. I used to, the one thing I, I take from growing up in in, in, in Balcours was the summers every summer you, you'd go out you'd get a few cans and sit on the hill and just watch the chaos <laughs> <go by. laughs> just watch the chaos that. whether it was a, a bloke <laughs> on a bleeding horse and cart flying up and down through the field <laughs> and some bloke saying give me my bleeding horse and car back or whether, <laughs> yeah, it, was, whether yeah. it was a police car or whether you know a police car was chasing a, a you know a robbed car or whether you know when I when I tell the boys were bleeding trying to knock people down, uh, I was just it, mad. It was crazy, but it's unbelievable life experiences, and it does give you, you know, you know. There's definitely, you know, I had, I had plenty of fights growing up, uh, yeah. you know, street fights and stuff. Um, 
I, 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 I'd never really caused any, but you would, you would have to kind of, you have to stand your ground, otherwise you get, you, you get stepped on. I, I never, I never try to engage in fights. I would give people an option. I'd say, look, if you want to do something, you can, you can go ahead and do it, and, and then I'll do it. I would very rarely, in, you know, throw digs at somebody before them having to, before them engaging with me. Yeah. Them. I had, I had my first share of fights, um, won and lost plenty of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, I enjoy it. Me, me, the time growing up in Ballymun is, is, I still live in Ballymun now. I love it. Like, um, yeah, I just have so many great memories. And all, all, all my old friends as well, I don't see them that much anymore, but like, they're all still floating around. And, and I, even when I started fighting, I stopped hanging around with them um, because I was fighting. I was yeah. just training every day, twice a day, every day, dedicating my life to the sport. But they still showed up to every single fight. Yeah. I wouldn't see them. Wouldn't see them for six months. But if I was fighting, Fucking 150 of them, and they, <laughs> yeah, they'd yeah. probably cause more trouble than I anyone else. To God. But do you know what I mean? They were there behind me, and, and and that's that's something that's very very rare. You know what I mean? They they always it was something that like they always got behind me, no matter what. Not, very 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 happy to have lads like that back in Europe. You know, well, definitely. And, that, and and that is a mentality, as he said, that you're raised in in there. Like mm. that could that literally could be a south side uh, uh, Tala story yeah, where, it's, uh, on the other side and I, that's what he said I do refer to things like as an, a council kid and people they would be like what are you on about what are you on about that for and I'm like because it's there's millions of these stories yeah. in these housing estates that people don't really recognise yeah. it's like a it's like a soap drama yeah it's, you, it's, you know? it's, it's hilarious and you can relate to that I can relate to what goes on in, in, in Tala and in, in, these, in these council estates you know working class or you know the lower class estates there are crazy stories, like, there's just crazy funny stories that are very common, like, you know, as I say, you know, the police coming in and, and, and raiding flats or, you know what I mean, chasing people up and down the road or lads on rob bikes and stuff like that. Now it's, it's anti-social, but... Yeah. As a kid, as a kid growing up, it was just, it was just, it was just fun Can't to watch. Can't even spell anti-social at that Yeah, age, I know. Me? And you know what, some of the boys, it's mad, like... No, these kids weren't very good at school, but you know they were very smart in other ways. But, like, you know what I mean? You can't, you can't. Look, like, my own, my own lad as well. Look, like, he plays on the road that I played on now yeah. as well. Like, and, do you know, I was actually sitting down the other day and I was watching uh, Into the West with him. Yeah. Into the West. Oh, oh, I show him all the up, up the Ballymun, the Lord of Ballymun, and that I was. That's what he said. I was, I was like, around for the filming of that. Jesus. I couldn't believe how much Ballymun has changed when yeah. you're looking at that film. Right at the start of it, when they're on the camp, and it's all flat on yeah. that field. Now yeah. it's like IKEA and it's all yeah, of these things man, built that up. Was, they were the fields, you know, where all the, well, where all the horses used to used to be kept, like up and over the seven pitches and stuff like that. And uh, it was mad. It's, I used to always remember the horses would get out every now and then, <laughs> and they like you're talking fifty or sixty horses, and they'd come through the flats, and then they'd be in at, at you know in past Balcourt where where I lived. I lived just hopping through beside the flats there, and the big green where Ballymoney you know, used to play. Where I used to play football for them there. But it'd be like 70 horses and they'd be in at your garden and all. It used to be just... <laughs> you'd be waking be mad up there, no? like Waking up and there's like horses <laughs> in the back garden and I was like, this is nuts. But it was it was brilliant. Can you tell some people in them stories? Because I'm the same as well. I'm like kind of right on the mountain but mm. like in front of me is a big field and you'd wake up and like uh, if the, say if the fence is broke on like killing art and hill or something like that, there'd be cows and all on the yeah, blade field and you'd yeah. be waking up. And I'm saying to the people and they'd be like, oh, you must live way in the country and you're like, no, 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 no. We just threw a load of horses on a field like just, beside us, you know. Two day I was walking the line, too long ago, I'm walking up by the river and my house in the state. And I see this thing over, and this woman's out walking a pig, man. <laughs> she has a little black pig, and she's walking this thing oh, along. Jesus. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, Apparently, it's... pigs are bleeding. Yeah. Supposedly, really clever. And had yeah. the intelligence of a seven year old. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what I hear. Like, so I start, oh I was like, what are you doing God. walking a pig? And she's like, God, they're very clever. I have to tie knots different ways when I'm holding them in because you know how to get them on. I was like, Oh, no, the boy a pig. Yeah, it was actually one of Connor's joke as yeah. well. That is christening. Yeah, the little smart pig yeah, he did. All oh, right, I did see. The, I seen the pigs, <coughs> uh, the little little black pig. Out fascinated there as well. with them as well. Huh? Andy looked tasty. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if he starts acting. If he acts the mess, he's going in. He's going in the pan. Yeah, <laughs> he's sizzling. He will be. Yeah. So, uh, so. Uh, I kind of grew up in the same kind of area, same kind of place as, as like Ballymun. The Ballymun's are now across the world as well. Like, you yeah. know, holidays, say, from Ballymun, people are like, Jesus. Yeah, it was, it was rough. It was a rough, it, a rough area, but especially 80s, 90s and stuff, it was it was plagued with, with heroin and stuff. But, you know, that's that, that, it is what it is. But it was, you know, uh, for me, I, I've, 
I have nothing but good memories, really. Mate, do you know what, me? I wouldn't go back and change it. I yeah. wouldn't go back. No, but it's only when I'm older now that I look back and think of some of the stuff he did, and I'm like, man, how did like, how did you survive that? And I see me on you. Imagine you seeing when your girls down some of the stuff you did. Yeah, like, man, yeah. Jesus. Like, I look at, like, like when, when I was, when, when I've, my oldest now is seven, Layla, like, when I was seven, I was out, you know, running, like, three miles away down the forest, like, <laughs> on my own, like, you yeah. know. My, my, my daughter's not allowed out. You know, no. she's, she's allowed out in the little patch of green that's about the same size as this room. And you stay there and uh, you make sure you can see you at all times. And don't pick up that off the ground and don't mess with the tree. I was in the seven pitches falling out of trees and climbing up the flats and all. And, like, just <laughs> doing random. Like, the lads used to jump. Like, the lads used to jump from the stairwell across to the landing from the seventh floor. Like, just it used, to knock out, used to knock out the windows. And then there was a little area where you could climb out and jump from one side to the to the seventh floor to, so, the, like, to the landing like crazy and lads young flats would climb the flats like climb up the balconies from the from the the g floor to the seventh and now i wouldn't i'm terrified i used to get on top of the flats i used to get on top of the flats and i'd be terrified i'd start to get bleeding nauseous and i'd be in the middle to be like a hundred meters on either side, and I'm like, I'm gonna fall off the edge. <laughs> like it's virtually impossible to to fall for a hundred meters <laughs> over the edge. But I'm like, oh jeez, and the lads would be walking on the edge of it, and you know, flinging stones off. You'd kill somebody. You'd kill somebody. You've hit somebody with a stone. Oh, they'd be dead. Yeah, they'd be dead. They'd be and we, dead. the lads would think yeah. it's hilarious. Go, oh, watch, we're gonna hit you. And I hit John. I watch, watch, when we tr- and you'd miss him by an inch. And you think it's hilarious. If you had a hit him, he was dead. <laughs> but yeah, but that, you, you are risking with the thing. But yeah. you, at that age, you just don't realize. There's actually a great story. One of my, uh, one of my mates, um, Shawnee, his name is. And anybody who clarify this story, he's from Maribel Lane. Uh, Years ago, right, he was on top of the flats. And he fell off the top of the flats. And you wouldn't believe it. Do you know how he survived? Uh, he landed on a motorbike. No. <laughs> I swear to God, Randy. Right? Yes. He said he stood up right, and his leg was turned backwards. Now, he runs boxing clubs and all now. Yeah. He's, and he's, he's such a great guy for the community and all. Yeah. but he fell off a fucking flat Jeez. landed on a motorbike the suspension saved him no. and he said he stood up and his leg was thrown the other way oh, around oh man I remember my brother fell off my brother was climbing the flats John as well and he was climbing from the fourth floor to the second floor and midway he fell off and landed on his back and then we winded himself pretty bad he was in a heap on the ground but his mate Noel Quinn now I used to end up hanging around with Noel Quinn Noel's a mad buzzer like he's messing but he's not there Noel right. Quinn no no no, no, no not there Noel Quinn but Noel Quinn runs down to me ma John's after falling off the flats me ma nearly has a heart attack she, she almost collapses and then John comes crawling in the door like at, at the horn his back with nothing major like but Noel Quinn, yeah, he fell off the flats. My man's like, he's dead. <laughs> he's dead. But that was the crazy. You know, they, they were the fun things. They, you, uh, you just had to find stuff to occupy yourself because there wasn't there wasn't much else. Like you know what I mean. So you you did what you did. Right? Uh, and that's you know, as I said, like some days, like my uncle, he was sick today actually, and he's sitting in there playing FIFA. He is this morning. And I'm like. And I love a day like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Day off school, sitting in playing fever, go out onto the road, you're not going out because you weren't in school. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, sick till about, you're sick till half two till everybody comes home from school and then you stand to feel a lot better. Ma, I feel great now. Is it alright to go out? And your ma's like, no chance. No and then you start wrecking her head and she yeah. fucking she you tried, out. She'll throw you out the door after about an hour. <laughs> yeah, man. So, so when I met you already, um, we, we, we could see her talking to you about mm. Banny Moon and, and, and all of them stories for days and days. Do you know yeah. what I mean? We probably we get a whiskey sometimes. And yeah, we'll we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll reminisce. We'll reminisce, but I know people want to hear like that. And I know he did as well. Look what you are feeling when the basketball arena was going down and all of this stuff because because that was a good. That was like a. When, so when we met you, it was in Raccoon. Yeah. Um, I know. Remember, I remember having a conversation with me, even when we moved to Longmire. Mm. We were sitting outside the. I was sitting outside in my car, and you yeah. were walking by. And this, I remember this conversation is is blazed down. You you had opened your club, I think, a year or two ago. It was priming at the time. Yeah, yeah. And me and Dean were talking about opening a club in Tala. Like, and right, I was yeah. saying to you, Roddy, and you were like, "Oh, Paddy, there's loads in it. There's this, yeah. there's that." And I remember being like, "And it's mad to be sitting here now." Yeah. Because I I remember at that time saying, "You know what?" That um, th- I was trying to figure out how to do it yeah, then, yeah. and we had not like probably three or four fights at that time. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And I'm still trying. To, I remember coming in the gate, um, the, the first time I kind of seen MMA would have been 
It was a mad situation. I was in I was in a nightclub and someone had tickets for this cage fighting, right? Yeah, and this yeah. is how we couldn't not get into it, but this is how we couldn't see like, oh shit, right? And you were on the card. Jesus. And then I was seeing it on the gate and stuff like that. Goes down, Ian Freeman was doing the commentating on oh, it. Oh yeah, and yeah. No, I don't know if it went well for you that night, it was yeah. just one of those situations. Yeah. That, but Barry Moon was definitely there. <laughs> yeah, that was it. I think that was the night I, I lost uh, Emmanuel Fernandez, yeah. I got I got got clipped, got knocked out, but uh, I don't remember any of that. I don't remember after being knocked out, I don't remember leaving the, the, the ring. I only came around backstage after and I always tell everybody a story that I thought I won that fight. <laughs> I went backstage and was talking to the doctor and he was like, Yeah, okay, on I was like, Yeah, I feel fantastic, man. I feel great, like 'cause I'm I'm thinking I'm fucking at the, I'm at the, I'm at the smashing <laughs> the opponent up, and he's like, Are "You sure you're okay, Owen? How are you feeling? You know where you are?" And I was like, "Yeah, I feel fantastic." I said, "Why do you keep asking me, man? Right, I feel great." He said, "No, you got knocked out." I said, "No, he didn't get knocked out. What are you talking about?" <laughs> I, I, I'm fine. And then I looked in the mirror, and my face was out here. I took a bad smack, but apparently the boys, like all the boys, were trying to swarm the bleeding ring. To get to to get in and uh, give it to Emmanuel, which is not great, like you know what I mean. All respect but, but, to him. But back in the time, but the boys then, just got so much emotion invested yeah. in it, and they were behind me all the time. This is a field and Bally Moon to them. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and even at exactly. that time, it's like it's. I know exactly. Yeah, they wanted the, they wanted to go in, but look at the end, nothing happened at the end. He he would all jumped up. They, it, they, well, they, we they was, we, you would have been backstage because we were sitting there in the crowd at me yeah. and uh, Ian Freeman. Had, had, I came in and was like, if any of you guys jump in and all this, I've had with fuck guys all over the world and all. Yeah. We remember sitting there going, this is great. <laughs> we, and we'd only been training like a few days or yeah, something like that. This is like controlled a, chaos. I love yeah, it, yeah. We can't wait to do this, I yeah. was thinking. But then it, as we went back then, um, so say we kind of fast forward through a few of the years then, I kind of start competing. Yeah. Um, I, I, I went out for, I think you got injured. It was kind of yeah. when I got the big chance. That was in, in France. That little crazy psychopath yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah so... Uh, this is a funny story. And I know how you even got injured. I'll tell you, yeah, yeah, I remember how you got injured. Well, it was well, Chris Fields. Yeah, Chris Fields. It was like a, I don't know. I'll tell you, it's right. So I was sparring with Chris Fields, like a fucking, <laughs> like, and that was the weird thing because there wasn't that many of us. Paddy had gone in and sparred Chris. Chris was a hundred kilo. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I was sixty-six kilo at the time, sparring Chris, and I don't know what made me think that I could like karate block. Chris Fields' uh, leg kick or body kick and I tried that and he basically just snapped me in arm, <laughs> hyper extended me arm, my arm was in a heap. And Chris, I was talking to Chris the other day about this, right? And Chris still, oh, but that's your own fault, like, no, no sympathy. <laughs> yeah, but no what are you, sympathy. No sympathy at all. Shit, what are you trying to block? Like? And, and, and he's right, I shouldn't have been trying to block like a fucking Egypt, but it, like, it was, it was, could you yeah, I put you my hand out to, to block, like, and uh, he just caught me right on the elbow and the arm hyper extended, and I was like, uh, my arm swelled out and all. But Paddy being the mad, mad mouth <laughs> father that he is, go to me, he was like, like, do you go to France? I was like, why well, is there no money to go to France, John? Yeah. That's what I said to him, because yeah. I was broke as a joke at the time, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And he was like, you get paid, you mad thing. Yeah, you get paid, and you get paid, and you get flights over and all, but he's like, lovely. I'm on a holiday to France. That's yeah. why he was thinking I'm going to France. Like, and then all of a sudden I get the video sent to me of the guy that I'm fighting. Yeah. He was at the L- point and robbed the dog that time. Yeah, he's a little powerhouse. Yeah, yeah. monster. Yeah, yeah. He just looked in th- very intimidating. Yeah. To be honest, his jiu-jitsu wasn't great. Yeah. He, he was kind of Bushido stand-up or something like that. But he was one of them. If you're going to be intimidated with somebody, yeah. this was the man. You know what yeah. I mean? And there was a lot of that back then as well. Like I remember my first... Like I done, I done an MMA league for years ago, yeah. which was like you now headshots years and years ago, and it was my first ever kind of introduction into MMA, and uh, I, I I was fighting this bloke, and he, he looked like Tom Poe out of the kickboxer. <laughs> he, he basically modelled himself off Tom Poe. He came in with the, the shortest pair of toy boxing shorts I've ever seen. He had a mohawk and he shaved his head, and he kept coming over, standing beside me and looking at me, and staring at me, and all. I was like, this is, he's, he's, he's gonna, he's probably gonna try and murder me, like, you know what I mean? And he's like, just kept coming over beside me and stuff. I was like, this is, this is fucking weird. Anyway, I went in and he, he started swinging like a lunatic and he was like, it was terrible. I was like, he doesn't know what he's doing. So I threw one or two digs, he swung back, I took him down and I took his arm home with me, like, within a minute. And it was like, I, I, from that point, I was like, you, 
Yeah. A lot of the you look, you can look the part, but it doesn't matter what you look like. You know what I mean? It really. So doesn't. that was the same with you, like you lad, small, stocky, baldy. I think he was yeah. as well, ripped. We'd oh, have put the Dunstars boxer yeah. shorts on, standing yeah. there. I was sixty two point seven yeah. kilo or something. This guy was like cutting to sixty six. So I was like, yeah. I should be giving a crack here, you know yeah. what I mean? For the uh, and and. That's kind of I think that's where I kind of realised you know what I'm going to do this for the rest of my life yeah. I, was, I, was, I was fucking scared over there no yeah. doubt you know what I mean yeah. but I knew like if we get through this I'm going, and that's what kind of got me through I was like I go back to Ireland like oh he was actually fighting under your record on the screen and all he had yeah. me down his tree and all with the time and all I was like oh no these are going to think we're an animal you know what I mean and, uh, but that was a mad situation we, had, we ended up having to bleed and get trains and all back <laughs> from Mars yeah, 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 you know? yeah, because of the, the ice, ice cloud yeah the ice the yeah, ice land volcano the drops us off the train station gives me 400 euro Mm. See on the other side, we am in Marseille, man, yeah, with Chloe of Storm. I mean, no. I was at a third of my MCL and all, so it's a mad. But it, it's journeys like that, as you were saying, like even you're fighting your man Kung Pao there, and yeah. it's like, like yeah. you, you, you break through little barriers, don't you? You have yeah, to go through these things. This is, this, is what, this is what the sport has done for me, and it does for everybody. It's, it's these moments of fight or flight you, that you face almost on a daily basis like you know what I mean like I face it now like I've my guys now my guys are getting really really good and you know I'm rolling with them and the guys are you know I've been tapped out by my guys now at this stage as well yes. and and they're, they're, if, if you take a week off and you're tired they're, they're killing you <laughs> sure. and you are, that's, that's a test of your ego every single day and the test of your your will to do it like you know what I mean and, and through the years constantly you know, going out and 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 uh, and putting yourself out there in front of your 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 close friends, your peers, and and a lot of the time people people come as a friend, but deep down they want to see you lose, and you know you, there's going to be a lot of that. 50-50, that yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. No, in your to your face, it's like wish you all the best, and then and then behind your back, oh, that fucker gets knocked out. <laughs> and and, and, and listen, live, like. and it happens because you do get beat. You know what I mean? There's very very few. I don't. There's very few people. Well, there's nobody that has not lost. Somewhere yeah, along the line, do you know what I mean? That anyone that's extremely successful has lost a lot. Like, do you know what I mean? And uh, it's you know what I mean. When you when you put yourself through these barriers, going into enemy territory, your f- f- was it your first fight? That was my third fight. fight was like, so going over to to an unknown area, fighting a, an unknown guy that you know was you know looks the business and had a decent record as well. He beat, I think. But he beat he beat Rob at the time. And Rob so was very Rob good was, at the, Rob was bashing me in the yeah. gym, so he was like. Oh, yeah, no. so you go in there and you face it and you put it all on the line and, you know, once you start doing things like that, everything else becomes a lot easier, I think, you know what I mean? Definitely. Yeah, yeah, your fear to to take risks and, and put yourself out there kind of, kind of dies. It doesn't go, but it, it's a lot less. It does. And you know what I've kind of realised over the years, you're saying that about students and stuff like that, we're stuck in the circle of life as well because yeah. they, there's there's a life within jiu-jitsu as well. There's a certain personality yep. within your club. Mm. You you can go around uh, different clubs and you'll find nearly the same person. So yeah. you, guy that has all the gear. Yeah. Guy that, you know what I mean? Guy that has no gear but always turns up and drop it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you'll get, as I said, the other person that will, um like, you will they will grow yeah. from, from the situations that they're putting like, as yeah, well. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, I would say there's like, I don't know, it's like, I heard this before as well, it's like there's, there's loads of different faces, but there's about five or six different personalities. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. There's like, there is the, the there is the, the the guy that you know has all the gear, and uh, there's the guy that likes the idea of doing it, but sometimes falls. You know, when the pressure's on, falls apart. There's the guy that hasn't like has nothing that that will die in a, in in a ring. Yeah. There's you know there's a guy that does it for, for fun. There's you know, there's there's the happy go lucky people. There's the you know, there's the people that sometimes you see that you just know you don't trust. There's just something in their eye that tells you. It's that mad. There's you know, there's, there's, just there's, 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 there's I'm, I think because yeah. we, as a coach, you meet hundreds and hundreds of people, and they they fall into you're you're this type of guy. You know, you're that one of the five, or you're this one of the five, yeah. and and. Uh, and, and, and that's it like as I said there's different faces but there's there's not that many different personalities no, like you know and because you spend so much time with different personalities you figure people out fairly quick you know so so your club and my club as well from where we came from so I'll mm. go to the idea of that the 10,000 hours documentary in a second because yeah. that was where it kind of blew up but, but your club now like, which will be uh, like Charlestown SPG Charlestown mm. SPG Dome 24 SPG Concord yeah. stuff like that it is based on the way of like different personalities as in like the guy that wants to be a working guy that wants to yeah. come in and learn somehow to it's not like it was when we were yeah. it? no, it, no it's like it's very welcoming it's very yeah. open to, to public uh, 
Yeah, it's it's, it's 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 open to it's accessible for the average Joe now and 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 for the, the you know the 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 guy that just wants to do a part time and enjoy the sport. He doesn't want to do the gym too much. Just wants to go in and learn something new and uh, and do it to you know to take his mind off his job. Where for for us when we were fighting in 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 a um, in a long while it was you'd have been weeded out basically you know what I mean because it was everyone was in there was very there was no kind of beginner program there was no path for a for a guy to come in and just stay there you were in you jumped in with the rest of the boys um, that breeds killers yeah but f- for a for a business model it's terrible yeah, do you know what I mean do you know what I mean and it, to me martial arts is for for weak people yeah so. and exactly and, and um, you know the way things have changed the way John has changed uh, um the structure of of SBG, the way his SBG is run, and, and that's funneling down to all of us. Does you can be anybody and still find, you know, a place in in the gym. There's, the, the, you know, there'll be something for you. You can do, if it's if you don't want to get punched, you can do pads. If you don't want to, if you don't want to compete in jujitsu, you can just get a few rolls in. If you just want to drill, you can come down and do a drilling class. If if you know you you know like I I do stuff with Mike and he does a lot of stuff on TV so you know sometimes he can't spar so he'll he'll yeah. drill because he'll do exactly, an hour yeah. striking drilling or he'll do a, an hour BJJ drilling because he, he you know what I mean he might be able to he might be on TV the following week or something so there's there's something that's accessible for everybody now where it wasn't we went in you went in day one and we'll probably put in with me and all uh, and any of the guys that had a lot of experience and just. Just fought to survive. <laughs> that was it. I went in like I, I when I started, I, I, I when I was training, I was getting bashed by people on a daily basis, and I you, uh, I, you know, I was getting battered. I, I enjoy. I didn't enjoy being battered, but I enjoyed the fact that it was real. And you were getting better. And and I was like, all right, I, I set small goals. Okay, that guy tapped me out um, within two minutes. I'm getting to two and a half the next time. And, and, and I'm getting to trade the next time and then oh he didn't tap me this round I'm going to get a dominant position on him that guy that, that guy landed 15 punches on me in that two minutes he's not going to let I'm going to land at least two back or I'm going to land four back or and I, I just small little small little steps of progression that's that's where I'm, that's where I marked it down as and when you do stuff like that and you, you, you keep looking at the little the, the little steps you make, you, you're going to get good, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Address the mistakes you make, of course, as but always. The, but what you were saying there is literally like the structure to be able to, yeah. to, your brain finds this little way to survive and yeah. like little bite punch. And like, everyone thinks that you come in and you can fight and it's all right and it's good. It's not. It's no. an absolute grueling process yeah. to be able to get. So a lot of guys I see that are kind of like, 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 like emotional about the game and yeah. like, oh, it's not doing this and I can't do that. And it's like, like sometimes now I don't know whether it's like even like it's very soft kind of game now yeah. it's supposed to be yeah. but the idea of jiu-jitsu is it's going to be like and MMA and yeah. wrestling and all of this you're going to have a lot of failure before yeah. you have success yeah it's about getting comfortable with that it's it's definitely about getting comfortable with with the loss it's like you just you're going to lose loads you're just going to lose loads like, I mean if you know, I think I, I can say I've been fucking tapped out more times than I've tapped people out. Like, you know what I mean? I always say you get you tap a thousand times to get yeah. that one tap. Yeah, you, know, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just, it's the it's the rites of passage. Like, you know what I mean? Um, and it's just getting comfortable with it. And some people, some people, their ego takes off and they're like, I'm not doing that crap. But they won't go with that person. They dodge oh, that person. Oh, oh, yeah, they dodge that person, and then it's either, you know, it might not it might not be the ego of aggression. Like, it might not be a uh, Oh, I'm not doing that because I'm not getting tapped out. I might be beating yourself up over it. I'm, I'm crap at this. Exactly. I'm not doing it because I'm crap and you mostly beat yourself up over it. You know, and then you'll get the guy that just accepts, okay, I, 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 I like to, I like to f- find solutions. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I like to try, I like to, f- to find the quickest solution. I don't like to dwell on stuff and waste time fighting or arguing or beat myself up over stuff. I, I, the way I think is, Right, I've lost. I got caught. You know, I got knocked out. I got submitted. What? How did I get submitted? All right, I'll go home and watch some tape, or I'll, yeah. I'll put myself in that position and try and figure it out. And if I have to get, I remember what you done, which was very. Paddy fought. Um, you were getting ready for the tank off, and that would be the ten thousand. Yeah. Was the same so thing. you, 
you gave uh, you put a bet out for anyone it to leg lock. John, I put that out. Well, all right. <laughs> well, the, there was a bet going out for somebody to leg lock Paddy, like. But if that's not if that's not putting yourself in a position, putting yourself in the most dangerous position that you can be put in, and and and, and trying to get comfortable in there, I don't know what is like. Wow. That's uh, and that's that. It's stuff like that that you need to do. You need to. You know, get comfortable. Uh, people say get comfortable in the uncomfortable. You know what I mean? And it really is that. Yeah. Like, and I think that, like, um, so when, when they, they, they that gym kind of moved to Longmoyle, I think that's when it really started to kick off. Eh? Yeah. I know that that show came up, um, the one in the basketball arena. I know yeah. it's like, it's a legendary show, especially yeah. about the people that were there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, it was the one of the first times I think that we were really going to make a mark on, like, right, this is what we've done, this is what we mm. developed. You were fighting uh, Sharon Guggery, yeah. I was fighting your man Artem Stenkov, you yeah. were main event, I was co main event. It was on the middle of the M50, which yeah. is like the Ballymun is on like 20 minutes that way, yeah. the rest of that is that way. So everyone was meeting in the middle. And at the moment, at the time, we didn't even really realise what the significance yeah. of that was. Like yeah. That, that 10,000 Hours documentary that came out, like yeah. we were shooting that. And that was probably like one of the first of its kind yeah. in Ireland. Force, force kind of embedded kind yeah, of Yeah, first kind of documentary on, 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 on the boys. And um, Paddy. Sorry to interrupt there. Yeah, you beat me to it, but we actually have a clip here, oh, which no. might bring back some memories for you. That's all. Let's go. Nice Reese's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lady, the worst ones I had there. No, yeah. Oh, no, this person and that person. Oh no. Why do you haven't changed? I know. Oh no. When all else fails, just scrap. That's a great way. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, just scrap. And that's it. Like you get in there and you. You, you fight your heart out, and you know if, if it's not going well, you just stay in there, and you you just you just keep going, and you never give up. If you want something, find what you want. Don't look on the internet and say, "Oh, that looks cool." That, yeah. Boy, and try it. Yeah. Try a few things out, and then try get a feeling out of it, and try feel what you you actually want to do, whether it's media, whether it's something like that, and you actually get a pleasure out of doing it, and then dedicate your whole life to it, and you'll become good at it. I just want to get in there. Yeah, but that's the truth. Like I mean, I always, I still look back at that, what you actually said there, and I mean, if that's not, if that's not a life's motto, I don't know what is. Because people will, people will slave, people will slave in a in a job, and they might be, they might, they might be getting decent money and stuff like that. But once I'm sure, looking, looking at you know, you're looking at, you know, very successful people. When you have, when you get money, once you have it. Then, then once once you have it, you need to find the joy in 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 something else. And if you're a you know a solicitor and you hate your job and you've got your money, you'll hate your job then after that. Like you know what I mean? Where I'd much rather find something that I love doing and and and, and get by. Just once I pay my bills and I, the line just after that, where we just stop there. I turn around and say, all I want, all I ever wanted was enough money to buy a gaff. Yeah. Just to get a mortgage and and have a gaff and. I got that, so I'm I'm happy at the moment. Like now, I'm happy where I am now, but now I'm doing a little bit better. So I'll take it. I'll I'll, I'll look. I'll look for the next little goal, and I'll try and maybe get a nicer gaff, or I'll, I'll you know I'll try and get a bigger gym, or so you take these small steps. But I'm always going to be doing what I love to do. So I mean, you can do that forever. And and then that means that means you're not, like I, I commented on New York the other day. Yeah, like unless we seen that little family fall, and it's like that that some people's goals are a lot different than other yeah. people's and I'm kind of the same as you we yeah. like we well, just want that we just want a happy home yeah. I want to have I want to have more kids I want to just expand that kind of idea and yeah. and teach them kind of the stories that we that what we've been what? through you have actually something to talk about your yeah. kids now as well rather than yeah. went to work this day that day and there's nothing, yeah. nothing wrong with that yeah. but the idea of like you become this like legendary figure yeah. oh, like, honestly Ireland, I think like, we're very fortunate that I found what we found like as I, I mean I took a big risk. I was, I was, I was in a half decent job. I was going to become a like, I was working in this pharmaceutical company, and they wanted me to do like an apprentice calibrator where you would calibrate weights and stuff like that. And I, it was it was a very good job, and they were, I was going to get good money. And at the time, I was I was working in the job from seven till three, right? Because they let me get off an hour. They let me come in an hour early and open up and leave a trip because I would get. On the bus from Finglas to town, get on another bus from town to Harold's Cross, teach a kids' class in Harold's Cross um, for John, jump on another bus from Harold's Cross to Raff Farnham, do two kids' classes in Raff Farnham, go back from Harold's Cross to, to uh, go back from Raff Farnham to Harold's Cross then, 
at 8 o'clock train from 8 till half 9 jump on another bus to town and then a bus from town to, to home and I done that for the goods of a good year and you know and then I just said to myself take the risk Roddy and throw it all in I told the boys in the job they says look I says look I'm, I'm going to leave I'm going to become a fighter and he says what are you, are you mad like he's like are you crazy what do you mean you're going to be a fighter and stuff like that I says yeah I'm, I'm, I'm going to give up the job I'm just going to I'm going to be teaching some kids classes to give myself a little wage and uh, I'm going to train full time and and I still see the boys now that work in that job now and they always say we see on the telly and what you're yeah. doing and stuff like that and uh, uh, you know it's one is down to a lot of the, the, the hours that I've put in the hard work that I've put in and of course always a little bit of luck you know what I mean oh definitely and, and the idea is that but when you stick when, I know when we started out was when my mom was like what are you doing like, you're, mm. like get a normal job get a job you know mm. what I mean you're like Man, but like I love this. It makes me feel in a certain way that yeah. I don't feel and happy. Yeah. And I think you're like as I said with goals and like everyone has different dreams and stuff yeah. like that. And if your dream is to be a bin man, then yeah. like we wish you the best with that. But don't don't try drive your this mm. is what I'm doing. Well, I want to do this because of this and because of that and mm. because I'll be able to buy this and I'll be able to, but when it goes down that road to say you're not you're never gonna be happy. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, There's never happiness there. Yeah, if you're if you're killing yourself to like um, obviously money is a is 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 a, is a big one. You you need to get boy. You, you need you know. I still like because I be talking to the wife all the time. Like I still kill myself walking. I enjoy what I do, so it's not that bad. But I kill myself walking. Yeah. I walk non-stop, and that's just to just to become financially secure. Because I don't want I don't want now now that I've got my mortgage and stuff like that. I don't want to be still paying my mortgage when I'm sixty-seven. No, I'm so now it. now now the next goal is to get rid of it. I've got it, now I need to get rid of it. But once you do that, once I do that, I'm, I, I, I'll have no worries. And I'll say, I've, I've, I've won, I'll say to, 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 to the wife, I says, look, at the moment, we're winning. We're winning in life. We have a great relationship with beautiful kids, have a nice home. I love what I do. Um, uh, I, I, I've got to experience so many unbelievable things that most people don't get to experience. At the moment, I'm winning. The only, the only thing, I'm not quite there where I want to be financially and once I'm there then I've won then, no, then you've won. Uh, who gets to win at life very few people get to win at life and the good thing man. is really because what you do in your job and what I do in my job you're giving back more than you take yeah. in, in life yeah, in, in general Jesus yeah. it's a huge thing to go to your grave yeah. with like, to, yeah. to be able to say like, um, like I, I yeah. gave back more than I took you know what I mean the most um, like the, the thing the, the change in people the amount of people that have came into my gym that have came in a shell of themselves and and then just became completely different people, became confident just from what Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or mixed martial arts has done from them. Like I mean, I swear to God it's I don't know why it's not and people will say this, I don't know why it's not in every school, you know. I don't know why you're not forced to do it because what it does to people, it just it just gives them so much confidence because the skills want it right that's yeah. the thing the skills yeah. want it like I done I, I done a talk in three skills last week yeah. I do, next week I do one in Drotted they're yeah. coming to, me, to go to Drotted yeah. John's done them I'm sure yeah. you I've done them in, in, so the I went to my own one like, the skills want it as well because they realise what it actually mm. benefits yeah. of. we got kids that go to the go to like their, their parent teacher me and the parents are like what are the teachers are like whatever you're doing just keep doing it and yeah. it's like there's a big huge change in these attitude wise that mm. anger's that going down and mm. I think I think when you're growing especially in the areas where we grew up you have to prove yourself. So, like, the reason you get into fights and stuff like that is because somebody will say something to you, all right? You're with your mates. You have to prove to your mates that you're not a, you're not a pushover. Yeah. So you have to engage, okay? And you engage and you get into a fight or whatever like that. But I think when you become confident in, in, in yourself and in, in your ability to defend yourself, when situations like that come about, you know, and your friends know <laughs> yeah. as well that you don't like. I mean, I've been approached so many times when I was out with my mates, and you know, people, you know, getting in your face and talking crap. And I've never once had to engage in a fight because I just let it go. I just let it go because I don't need to prove exactly. to anybody. And my mates know, like my mates, will, mates will know, like, right, you could have smashed him up there, and they'll say he's very lucky that. You are the type of person you are, and you're so comfortable with yourself. Where if if I wasn't, I would engage in in, in that, and and you know, you know what I mean. You get you get yourself into trouble, and that's the same in school. But when we get young flies, like I have kids program, and when they get really good, 
It's the same. They're walking through school. And I think at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, it's weird when it comes down to it, no matter what you have of, you know what I mean, money, blah, blah, blah. The primal instinct is with, with, with men is like, who can who can <laughs> kill? Who can yeah. kill who? Who can kill At the end of the day, you can have all the money you want, but I can kill you. If, yeah. And when you're confident that you can defend yourself, you don't need to get caught up in all of the, the other riffraff. No, and, and, and I think that's a huge thing about uh, with, with jiu-jitsu and martial arts and wrestling, as you said, from the outside, that people that, that you say come up to you and stuff like that, and like, yeah, that is true, but I think that they're actually like being challenged without you even challenge them yeah. but in their own brain by yeah. saying, he knows some of that funky shit, you know, like they, yeah. they, and all of a sudden he's like, it, it, the instinct is the, yeah. is the overthrow it, you yeah. know what I mean? And there is, but the good thing is that, I love the thing about fighting is that no matter what happened, you got to fight someone at the end of it. Yeah. So, like when, when that basketball arena, we'll start there and we'll, we'll go through it. Is um, when when we went out to that basketball arena that day, I remember there's a little clip on that and we're upstairs uh, moving around. Yeah. I'm going out first and I say to you, Roddy, and the thing is, I didn't know all this stuff was happening at that time, yeah. but I remember it really, really well. Yeah. I remember being there and saying, Roddy, do you want to move around real quick? I was real nervous. I'd appear a black, uh, like challenge gloves or something. Yeah, I actually yeah. gave them gloves to little Nate and Kelly's dad. And Nate wasn't even in the building like, at that time. And his dad brought it home. I met him on the Lewis to the way in. Yeah. And I, you know when I was looking back at some things, I'm like, that's mm. it's mental how it goes down. Yeah. But like I remember my fight was over. I came back into the I didn't even come back in the dressing room. You were walking out at the time. Yeah. And I, as I said, my memory is like an elephant with this. He was stood on the stage for a good little way, was he? Really, was he? Oh, <laughs> Jesus. And it was the most awkward moment in the world, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, so so John Figs and says to me, I'm gonna put on this, you know, epic music. I don't know, it was from Gladiator or something. Before your actual walkout music. I says, No, because what will I do? I want you to stand there for a minute and a half. So I stood there and I I went through my little shadow boxing routine and then I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so I was like, What will I do now? And then I started shadow boxing again and I felt it, I started feeling really yeah. awkward. Even when you had mates around. And then my <laughs> mate O'Brien, a locked out of his mind, comes over to me and says, Give us a hug, Roddy. And I says, I can't give you a hug, I'm getting ready to fight. <laughs> and he told me to fuck off. <laughs> no, he yeah. says, Fuck off then. And then walks off, and then I'm like, it's, it's that getting real weird. But no matter what goes on, like you can be very nervous beforehand. You can you can be terrified. You can fall. You can they can mess up your song. They can do whatever. But for me, any time, any time like that happened, you know, I'd be annoyed. But as soon as you walk through the doors, it's gone. Everything yeah. is gone because it's it's game on. And uh, but yeah, John Figs and have me have me standing up there for three and a half minutes bleeding. I went. To, I I I I done all the combinations that I could think of. <laughs> and then He's I just know everything I have then, now. Then, then, I, then I started just kind of throwing straight punches, walking down. I was weird. It was so awkward. Like I was like, this is fucking weird, man. But I, I you know, I, as I said, I overcame and came through it. And Definitely. Oh, okay. oh, oh, and let, oh, you can't even skip past it. Like, yeah. like and that's how humble Roddy is. I overcame it. We got through it. Yeah. At that time. Like Shannon Gurdy had would have, would have got a victory in the UFC. Yeah, and he, he, was did, coming. he had a couple of victories in the UFC, and then so he that lost was big one. Round and he, for he, yeah, and good guys like Clay Guida and stuff like that. He'd fought and lo lo loads of really good guys, and and it was a it was a big test for me. And I was I was at the winning and defending the belt, and you know there was not at the time at my weight there was nobody, you know, in the country that that we could fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and. Uh, so they decided to bring 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 Shannon over, and you know it was it was a big test. It was a um, it was a very very tough fight. He was a big lad as well. I always remember making weight that day, and I I, I came in at around I checked my weight, and I was around sixty four flat, and the weight category was sixty five point eight. So I was I drank a liter of water and had a banana before the weigh just to get my weight up uh, for the fight because I I think I was naturally abandoned weight, um, but I just. You know, you just took the fight to what you yeah. get the man at that time. You had the information couldn't wait. Yeah, to yeah, exactly. Yeah, but yeah, the, the the fight, as I said, everyone talks about the fight and the fact that he got caught in that choke. So that's him. that's the so when you're caught, like, I know you remember because I like, I'm standing at the barrier there at that time. We mm. hadn't even gone backstage. We were still at the getting out. My fight had my gloves off, still had my wraps on, and I remember I was sitting there, and the whole place, Ruddy, was on. Like mm. it was, it was incredible, wasn't it? Like yeah. what was going on? Like literally, you got stuck in that choke. And like I remember being like, like you know, when you know as well, because the crowd, not that the crowd would know, but yeah. you, you know, you can tell like that's like that's, that's not that's right. deep trouble. That's a bad situation. Yeah. yeah, and it was it was a minute into the fight. A minute in. I, I just 
I, and I always say this to the boys now, it's something that I, I, I started relaxed. I was like, all right, I'll take your time, be relaxed in here. But if you start, if you start a fight at like a relaxed pace and this guy has a little bit more intention than you. The hell, you want to get that toned off? Uh, if he's a little bit more in tension than you and he's moving a little bit quicker, he'll get off quicker. Oh, definitely. So I yeah, was trying yeah, to yeah, yeah, com- yeah. be composed, not realising that he's coming out with a little bit more in tension than me and he, he beat me to it. Before I knew it, he, 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 had cu- he took me down and I turned and he was on my back and the choke was on. And I was like, oh no, this is, this is the first thing I thought is this is going to be very, very embarrassing. The first big test, um, you know, an Irish kind of soil against a UFC veteran and I'm going to lose typical Irish kind of thing. We're going to just fall fall mm-hmm. flat on that face. And, you know, it was getting dark because the choke was on completely. I was getting ready to go and I was just like, oh, just fight, just f- just fight as much as you can. And at that moment, I hear, running, Yeah, everybody's running, screaming, trying their best and, and I just, I just, just try and get a breath and, I managed to tore my neck a little bit and blood, f- f- you know, was flowing back and the, the you know, the screen opened, opened back up, up again. again and then he got a good tight squeeze again and I went and I, 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 I went to the point of, you know, I could see very little. I would say it was a second, it was a second before it was going to go out. Now, I have people say, I, you're mad just letting yourself go unconscious. So I, I wouldn't let myself, I wouldn't let myself just go unconscious. I would fight to the bitter end and if by chance I go unconscious that's that's not me just going oh you're choking unconscious oh, no it's not a it's, tough man uh, thing yeah, yeah it's, it's not, not a tough man yeah I'm not going to tap I'm just going to go unconscious I was I, I fight and I managed to get a little bit of uh, a little bit of oxygen a, bit, a little bit of blood to the brain and he switched his grip and once he switched his grip to the gable grip I was like he's gone he hasn't got it in his hand and John the fourth and John's very smart at his corner and he's very good at and I, I picked this up off him as well he'll he'll address stuff to the opponent he remember him saying oh he's after born in his arms out he won't squeeze again and I know for a fact Shannon heard that and, and, and that was it I, I, I got my back to the mat and spun in and got top and, 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 and I, then I took it from there um, and I just put the pace on him like I always did and before the fight like the whole camp I, I have this thing with me Carlos me Carlos is <laughs> off we well, would have been inspiring you yeah, heavy for that yeah, one yeah and, and, and like pa- Paddy was sparring and he, even in, 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 in the 10,000 hours I'm wearing the headgear and he's not and every and I, I think I even in that I have tissue with my nose because every time I take a we smack we fighters uh, full contact yeah. uh, t- uh, fighters t-shirt on and it's his blood on yeah, all yeah. I just every, every time I take even the slightest jab my nose is just piss blood like so uh, you know I took it I took a dig early on in the nose and my nose is pouring blood everywhere and um, but you, yeah like that was the way all my fights were as well I was always I was always a bloody mess but I, 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 I was dogged I, I was dogged. I always said one thing. I never went in with the with with the, you know, the ego. I'm gonna smash whoever, f- f- whoever's in front of me. I went in knowing that I'll, I'll fight it a bit on <laughs> end, and you know it'll take somebody to beat me, okay? Because I'll go, I'll go out, you know, I'll, I'll leave it all in there. And 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 a lot of the time when you when you fight with with that amount of heart, when you know yourself, no matter what it is, I say now as well. I give everything a hundred percent. I put my heart into everything I do, and if you do that, you you can't really lose. If it doesn't work out, you know it wasn't meant to be, or you made mistakes and you go back and you address the, what mistakes you made, you fix them, and you go again and you keep pushing. But if it doesn't work out and you you have to you have to change and do something else, then you do that and you you do it with no regrets that you because you put, you put a hundred percent in. And in that fight, I gave it everything. I I. I I was a second from being unconscious to getting up and and, 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 and taking control of the fight. I'm still very unhappy with that fight because <laughs> it was the only it was the only decision win that I ever had. It was the only time I ever went to a decision. And and there's times in the fight where I took a little I coasted a little bit, I took a breath and for me I was like, You shouldn't have took that breath down, you shouldn't have rested. Like I was standing, I was like, get your breath back. I shouldn't have. I should have just went. I should have went forward on him. Do you know what I mean? Because when you're tired, he's tired as well. And the first person to go forward and put the pace on him, you get an influx of adrenaline. And that spurs you on for the next bit. 
you, it's like I always say, you take their energy. If I'm yeah. exhausted, you're exhausted, and I push, I suck the energy from you because you become defensive and you're still fighting for your breath, and I'm taking your energy because I'm I'm pushing forward. The and there's really pushes even yeah, and there was one or two times forward. in that fight where I could have pushed and I, I look back and I didn't, but I was. I was exhausted. That's what I was going to say, but like, I don't even know. I think every, if you could have counted the amount of breaths you made from that walk to that, yeah. I don't think you had one left in you when yeah. it finishes. Yeah, I didn't, because I, I mean, it was very hard to get through that first round, because it was, I put everything in to get now that that um, that submission, and, and, and then I, I started walking, I started stuffing takedowns and all, and ended the first round, and I, I, I finished the first round strong, because I, I, I rocked them. And then the second round, um, I don't know whether there was many takedowns, but if there was a takedown, I got back up, and then I was starting to stuff all the takedowns and land me shots, and I was, landing, I well. was landing the more significant shots, and I was pushing him backwards. I was always the one controlling the fight, and then the last round, so it was a very close fight. Um, but it just, I, I, I never went with decision, and, and it was an experience. I really enjoyed it. And, but as I said, that was probably the kicking down the door of the first victory against somebody that would have been the first victory to some, somebody that had got a UFC win yeah. you know what I mean it, Which was, is it like, was a test of our ability to see where we're at it, as a team I think it was starting to show right all of these days waking up all of this going forward to yeah. me and every single fight was like that like it yeah. was literally I remember because when Conor got signed I remember being like like excited that he got signed but excited that oh my god now it's starting to happen like I was thinking I was 10 and 0 at the time and I was yeah. saying to myself like like I'm close. I'm now. Yeah. We're so close now. Yeah, you know what I mean. This is it. We we we. You know, one thing that Connor always it was weird. Like I I, as I said, I always believed that I would give it my all in in in, in every fight and stuff like that. And we always believed that we were good and tough. But Connor came in with this, just this mentality that invincible. I'm invincible. And he, uh, I think that brushed off on all of us. Even oh, even John, like he just he just. He just would say these things and, 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 and then, you know, he, he started to do stuff and, and that brushed off and it was all like, and, and that, it was that mentality that, you know, you know, that group that went and fought in UFC Dublin, that group of guys, that group in the, in the, in the um, Long Mile Road, we, we took a good bit of that from Connor and we all felt that and it wasn't, it wasn't we just took it and, and didn't walk. We were killing ourselves. We were killing ourselves in the gym every single day. And, you know, I used to go to the gym and I used to think of excuses not to go because it was like going in for a fight every day. The adrenaline, I was like, oh, I have to go in and do this. Ten fives. Ten fives. I have to spar these guys and everyone's a killer and everyone's trying to, you know, push and stuff like that. And I was like, Roddy, just pretend you have a flat wire. Just pretend you're at the... I would even be considering hitting... Hitting the path with the car to get a flat tire, so that I could ring John and say, "I can't make it today. I got a flat tire." Like, these were things that would go through my head because I was so anxious. But then you get in and you're done, and you felt great afterwards. But I will say, Connor's confidence and and belief in himself definitely pushed off, and with, with, with everyone coming down, and then we all just started to believe that. We, we, could, we could do anything we could do it 100% yeah. and like, as you said even that like that makes ordinary people <clears throat> when they're listening to things they don't think that you, like I won't say people who goes but people kind of that have been through a lot of the stuff a lot of hard times like we're fighting and being in situations where you're blacking out and you're still fighting back and you're like you're at the end but you're still fighting back yeah. that people don't think that we get them thoughts yeah. and they get them thoughts and they yeah. go oh well there must be something wrong with me because mm. I'm doubting which that's why I can't do this that's why I can't do that and you be saying to people like you've no idea the amount of yeah. doubtful thoughts that go through your yeah. head it's when you decide to just keep going isn't yeah. it that it's just battling through it like and it, I think it's the same but not only in sport or, but anybody that's successful it's 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 just you know battling through the 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 tough times that the hard times and I think the fact that as I said with mixed martial arts you know on a daily basis you battle through very tough times uh, like day. loads loads of times a day like you know what I mean every round is a, you're in a position where it's very tough and I always say when you're fighting for your last breath you know what I mean if you're fighting to, to get your last breath before you go unconscious you know yeah, and it's not 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 as 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 scary as that. No, and if you can get through stuff like that, you can do anything. But it's just facing those, facing those fears, facing all, 
uh, you know, pushing through, you know, your, your doubts and your doubts and your ability and your doubts in yourself, like, because everybody has them. We're all human. We all get to that place where <laughs> you, you, you test yourself and you go, actually, can I actually do this? And if you just push through, you can. Nobody, same when people are exhausted. I'll always say about, there's always something in reserve, right? And I'll say to my boys, I don't know who said it to me, bro, we'll kill ourselves in the gym. We'll do whatever, you know, 10, 5 minute rounds or something and you're, you're exhausted you do a bit of cardio at the end and everybody's on the ground and they're like I have nothing left but there's stuff left because if I brought a pit bull in here and I hoosed it I guarantee <laughs> you every single one of you would be up off the ground and you'd scale the wall you'd be up on top of the oak and I guarantee you would do it because your brain your brain will always hold something in reserve because it has to for for four times like that, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. And, 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 and that's, Barry Moon, you never know what's yeah, coming. Yeah, exactly. And that's the, that's the truth. Like you know what I mean. It's, it's like when you are being chased and you're exhausted. <laughs> you're being chased. You're out there doing something, and you're like, oh, I'm bollocks. And you look back, and the bloke is still coming, or the, the whoever's still chasing you, and you're like, oh shit, we have to go again. And you go again, and you, you'll, you'll, there's always something in reserve, and it's just about constantly tapping into that. It's always about, all right, can I do a little bit more? You know, uh, I, I don't think I can do more. Try and do a little bit more. And I used to do that in, 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 in fights and stuff. When I felt exhausted, I would I would try and work harder than I did a few minutes ago. Yeah, Just yeah, to yeah, see yeah. what's left. To see what's left, yeah, yeah. in the tank. Yeah, and it, but as you, you said, with Connor coming in with that, like, that unbreakable mentality, that, that, that was a huge kind of yeah, effect. That was a, that was a huge part for the whole team. And then there's no doubt that like, so you're, you're a huge success now as well. But people are starting to look at your story. And as I said, the idea I wanted to come in here today was to, was to tell your story of it. Now, yeah. there is a huge part of it being Connor's yeah. Pie like a lot of the shots, a lot of the yeah. strategic stuff that you've done. Like, so mm. not, I won't even go through the Diaz fights and stuff like that. I'll, just, I'll, I'll go to the, the Mayweather fight, which is like kind yep. of where you were like, kind of one of the was, main Yeah, I was, on the, I was, I was the, 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 at the forefront for that one, you know. Like, um, that has to be a situation, even when like, I bring you straight, straight to the door, say, like you're standing at the door, he's mm -hmm. done all the work, he's done the camp. Look, and even that in between, I'd say most of the scary parts were probably ringing Kelly telling her yeah. you were going away for another four weeks was it yeah no like I mean Jesus Kelly's that's she you know you're, you're, you're very lucky like if you if you meet somebody that you know that is behind you 100% like now I'm behind hope whatever as well but she like I had a newborn baby a baby that was a month old and I left for two months mm. so my baby was three months old and for those three months I was I was gone for most of it do you know what I mean? And, and 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 I have two other kids, and Kelly, Kelly says, "Yeah, go do what you have to do." Do you know what I mean? I went for two months, and and I left her with the three kids, at home. She went in, and and she was up in the gym every night, and making sure people were paying. She was bringing the kids to school. She was she was yeah, she was doing everything. She was doing everything for two months, and uh, I don't know how she done it, and. But for me to have her, like, you know what I mean? That you know what I mean. I work for her and the kids. I work for her because I just want them to be secure. That's it. She knows that, um. But she does all the dog work. She does. She oh, does everything. Yeah. But um, you know, I was all done and dusted. Uh, the the thing that struck me the most was when we got to the ring, and and Floyd came into the ring and he had the belly on and he took the belly off. I was like. It I was is like, this, that's that's Mayweather. Like this is weird. We were sitting I said, this is the, watching that as a one of the greatest yet. boxers to ever do it. And I, I'm, I'm, I, me and the team are challenging him. You know, this is this is unbelievable. Who gets to do this? And I mean, people might, you know, all the boxers will probably say it's very unfair that you know Connor got the the chance to do. Well, Connor, Connor brought so much to the table, and. You know the game plan that we came up with. We we were we were smart for most part, and we were doing all right. People to say Floyd was holding off or whatever it doesn't make a difference. Connor was still landing. Connor still landed more shots than than anybody had landed on him. And I was talking to a lot of good boxing guys, and uh, people were giving me advice and, and 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 helping me out a little bit as well. And if somebody said to me, Mayweather can change his style. On, on, you know, on the flip of a coin and he can change in many styles and and I was aware of that and I was like I, I thought my mentality was he'll come out because he has an ego he'll just come out 
he'll come into the middle of the ring and he'll try and outbox Connor. And I says, Connor will land shots, definitely. Because I don't care. I used to say, no matter if Con- if somebody fired a, a, a gun at Connor, fired a bullet at him, he would still slip and fire yeah. that, that left. Because that's that's not that's not a conscious thought, that's a subconscious thought. And the way how quickly his brain works, that would happen. And he landed. He was landing he was landing a slip up a course, slip right hand. He was landing the shots. I was like, all right. So I says, maybe it'll play around with that for a bit. And then he'll, he'll sit on the ropes a little bit and he'll, he'll play the shell and he'll shoulder roll. He'll let Connor walk some shots and, f- and fire. And Connor was doing brilliant there. And, and just in the first few kind of moments when he's landing them shots, because as I said, I was sitting kind of a little bit watching this idea yeah. and I had the same kind of moment. Yeah. Oh my shit, man, that's Floyd Mayweather and yeah. Connor in the same ring. Yeah. And I knew that that was kind of, that's going to be the visual thing that's like. Yeah. But when, when he's landing the shots, like in the first few things, is it like, holy shit, we're going to do it? Like, yeah, this is yeah, happen. this is it. That's the first couple of first four rounds. And the, after the first four rounds, I was like, All right, kind of, you're doing brilliant. And, and the only bit of voice was given him was to stop throwing loads of shots. Stick stick with a one and two. No more than that because he's 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 he's, he's letting you throw on the arms a lot. And um, he's, he's trying to get you to punch yourself out, you know. And Connor was still landing shots and, he, you know, but Mayweather more and more he was making Connor hit the arms and stuff like that. And then he started to walk Connor down and get Connor on the back foot. Mm. And he would walk on her down, sit, cover, make on her throw three or four, and close again, and, and be this pressure fighter. And there's there's not there's only one way you can deal with that. You, you know, unless you're an unbelievable counter striker that can constantly be on the back foot and check hook and, and move into the space and, and use your long shots and stay on the move and be doing that for twelve rounds, which is hard. Yeah. And you need to you need to have done plenty of plenty of twelve round fights, that, yeah. which Connor didn't. That's hard to deal with, and he's going to close you down, and he's going to make you hit the arms. Or you can you can meet him in there and lean on him and push him back. And when he takes the step back, you you go on the forefront and keep him going backwards. But that was something that we didn't practice. We didn't expect Floyd to do that. I didn't expect Floyd to to, to walk Connor down. I didn't expect him to be able to push through Connor. I thought Connor would be able to hit him hard, and he wouldn't do that. But man, what I was so good at. Uh, uh, at deflecting the, the shots just enough the shots wouldn't land clean yeah. they would land almost clean and stuff and you know Mayweather's chin, chin is is untested as well realistic when somebody goes a whole career without being hit on the chin your chin is untested and you can you can take big shots and like, it entices the like it would entice the Connor to like I nearly yeah, got him yeah, there I'm going to try more, more and, again. And, and, and as the rounds went on I, I was like Connor's getting a bit bit tired and I was like you know, towards I was like, just hold for a round and get a breath back because I knew we would have to take a round off once or twice throughout the fight because, because going twelve rounds is going to be very, very difficult. And we we three months to to get them, and to, even the judges as yeah, well. You're probably yeah. going in there. Yeah. Like it, it's it's hostile territory. Yeah, even the you ref, know, when you look back at it, the ref hasn't even looked at Floyd Mayweather once. You know what yeah, I mean? So yeah, you know, you, you, you know, you probably were never going to get even if Conor had won every round, you were never probably going to get the result. No. But you know. For what kind of done, and and you know I I, I played a, a big part in 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 the in the game plan and the 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 the, the, the approach to the fight. I think we done very well for what we had. Like you know what I mean to go in into into a new sport. I'd never bo- I'd never um, coach co- coached a boxing match in my life. It was all new to me. I never um I was never limited to just hands. You know there's other ways to to, to deal with a pressure fighter when you have when you have um takedowns and kicks and knees and teeps and stuff like that there's other ways to deal with that but when you don't and you're limited to the hands um, I think we've done very very well and I you know it doesn't matter what people think about how well I do, how, how well we've done people will say yeah, yeah you should have done this and you should have done that but at the end of the day I gave everything I possibly well, could and oops. like I always do and I said it in interviews beforehand I'm, I, I've sacrificed so much for this fight I've left my newborn baby my three kids I've put in a hundred percent because the bloke that's walking into the into the ring to face Floyd has put in a hundred percent, and if I don't give everything I have, that's a weak link. And everyone did, and 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 when you do that, you you have no regrets. We didn't win. We 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 got cut out. Um, I think it was a win-win though. Yeah, you know. I yeah, no, but for me, I, I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, for me, yeah. we didn't, and I, I I was very beat up over it. Like after the fight, I was very upset, and even Kelly was like. Even Connor said to me, he's like, 
I, I, I apologise. I says we should. I should have. I should have been more aware of that last that style. I, we should have been able. To, we should have known that that could have came, and we didn't. And I, I kind of took that on myself, to, that we didn't know that. And people, people, you know, you get the heckler saying, "Yeah, but why didn't you watch things for where he walks him down and this and that?" Look, at the end of the day, it is what it is. But I gave everything I had. I watched hours and hours and hours and hours of tape, and I, I, you know, I, I, I. I, I said to Connor, I think these shots are going to work. He said, he watched hours and hours of tape. He said, these shots are going to work. And we, we came up with these these strikes and these strategy, uh, strategies. And, you know, and we, we, we done all right. And I gave it everything I could. So I, I have no regrets. Do you wow. know what I mean? And, you know, whatever people, people will say whatever they want. But I, I, I put my heart and soul into that camp. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy with what I've done. You know what I mean? I, I, I can commend you for it because yeah. I have to say <clears throat> from the outside looking in that's exactly what it looked like right here mm. does you take everything from that because you know what I mean you give <clears throat> Ireland as a nation knows that yeah. you would have put 100% of that and even uh, deeper again into the, like the MMA community that yeah. know you that even your own people that know you know yeah. that but like to be a a laugh from Valley One involved yeah. in one of the biggest things standing across from Floyd Mayweather picking the shots that's going to hit him you know yeah. what I mean it's a, it's a crazy little scene yeah. isn't it and mm. when you're old and no matter what happened in that fight no matter what happens and even with Connor's career and stuff like that when when you're old that's when it's going to be the yeah. most the sweetest be, look we don't watch my own fights back look I don't, I've only probably watched two fights that I've had back yeah. plan down on a mola yeah. because I'm literally it upsets me a little bit and yeah. people don't see that side of it because yeah. you watch a fight and you're mad at yourself you're angry at yourself mm. you, you're giving and saying something to that day and you're not listening because yeah. you're, like, you're thinking about something else there. yeah because but, but I think that's because we're striving for perfection it's impossible to get it but doesn't doesn't stop you from constantly trying to get it. No. You know what I mean. I, and I think I think that's why we, I think that's why you were so so successful and and why I was so successful in, in what I done. And I, obviously I, I I had to change my parts and stuff like that. Um, but I I I I I, I give my heart to anything that I do. And when you do that, yeah, I mean you you are gonna get good at whatever you do and you're gonna be successful at whatever you do once you dedicate your life to it and you you you, you give it your all and, and when you when you when you reach the these uh, problems and these walls and these barriers you 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 break them down and you, you find a way around them you know what I mean that's that's what do you think it's gonna happen again I don't know I mean I would like the I I, I would I, I when we're in dressing rooms now, we know I'm yeah. looking over and you've got guys, we've got guys and mm. we can't help but think sometimes that just like the good nights, the bad nights and or like it's weird that we're sharing dressing rooms as coaches now. Yeah, it's deadly. Two OGs. I know, it's not mad. Like we were, we were in there, but you know what I mean? It's That's great for our, our teams to have. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's great for our teams to have that we've, we've been there. We've been, like I said to my lads, I have been you. Yeah. I know. I know, I know you you've had, I know you've had, you have those doubts in your mind. And you're, you're worried that your, your prep wasn't as good as it was. But I'll always say to them, I says, just give it everything you possibly can. If you can do it, if you just give it your very best, give it your very best and don't, don't give up. Fight at the bitter end until you know for a fact there's nothing more that you can do in there. Then you'll go up and you can you can live happy with on that. the Sunday. That's what yeah. I mean. I say to the guys, yeah. listen, you're gonna regret this tomorrow if you literally torn away and no one know. Yeah. Everyone else might think you got hit or you got. You you'll know. know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And that that kind of thrives them and say you yeah. can only change now. Yeah. Tomorrow you can't go back and change. This is forever and ever yeah. and ever. And then you see them going, oh shit. Yeah. Like they realise, you know what yeah. I mean. No. So I, I, I wrap it up and anyway, but I, I'll ask you a no shame question because yeah. it's called no shame. So. <laughs> I didn't go too bad. If you had to spar Connor or Kelly, who would you spar? Oh, Kelly being his wife. Oh, Jesus. Um, yeah, no, it'd have to be Connor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, see, the, the reason being as well, well, Kelly's Kelly's a tough lady. Kelly's man. a tough She is, she very is tough, more than like, a million. Man. She takes no prisoners. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, and then obviously Connor, because. You very rarely remember what happened when you spar a you know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah, you come uh, out, you come out in a kind of a haze, but uh, yeah. So. I know the answer because I've seen you fight before. But if you had the chance to come back and fight Floyd Mayweather in an MMA fight, yeah, ah, that'd be easy. Well, yeah, yeah, that'd be easy, man. I mean, you know what's mad? The world would be like, 
How dare you say that? Yeah, no, no. no, people, people, like, yeah, no, boxing match, he'd, he'd, he would just play with you, like, you know what I mean? Because he's very, like, and you watch good high-level boxers, and, you know, when they're fighting good high-level boxers, just, you know, unless you're watching very, very carefully, it's hard to see the subtle little setups, the, the little steps, the tiny little angles, the, 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 the you know, but, you know what I mean? It's very hard to see that because they're matching each other. But when you watch a really high level boxer spar somebody that's not so good, you can see a huge oh. difference. But in mixed martial arts, it's the same because I could just I could just go in and just take them down and and and, and submit them easily. That, that legendary low single. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could just take them down so easy, like you know what I mean. Well, I, for me, I loved it. You know, I my thing was I was always I always felt I'd give them my all, so I would be happy to challenge anyone in a fight do you know what I mean when I was fighting I would go in and I you know if somebody said to me you know at the time whoever was the best like you know what I mean at my weight like Dominic Cruz now I started fighting at Bantamweight and it was Dominic Cruz and it was Uriah Faber I was like let me have a little let me have a little go with them and I went over (laughs) to the States and stuff like that that and I was sparring I was sparring in an American top team and I was holding my own and getting the better of a lot of these people and I was like, this gave me confidence and just, you know, gave me a belief that, like, yeah, just keep fighting, keep doing your thing and, you know, good things will, good things will come. It's and a lot, of, a lot of good things have come. A, yeah, a lot and a lot more to come for you. Do you know why? Because a, a huge part of this game, we think, is it's not kicking people on the way up, you know what yeah. I mean? And if you do, you'll find yourself in a situation where a lot of people mm. are kicking you, you know yeah. what I mean? But, like, I know, I stand by and say that Roddy and anybody, you will search far and high to find the guy that Roddy has fucked over. You never, yeah. you won't find the guy that he has. So even where you've got to now, you've got here on, on the clever road, the right road. You know yeah. what I mean? Now you're older than me and I'm saying that to you, yeah. but just from outside, sometimes you don't recognise it yourself, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, like, I just, I, I, I like to see the best in people and I, I, I like to, to, to help people as much as I can. Like, I like, like people are always say to me, Roddy, Jesus, people are doing well on the MMA scene now. Roddy, I remember when you were fighting main event and you came over to me and you said I had a great fight and you said I had a very bright future if I dedicate myself to it. And now look, look at me now. And I would say this to a lot of people. I would watch them and I would try and give everybody a little boost and not, not, not that, like, the, for me only. I just... Uh, if you I know see, what they get from it. I see if people are like you doing something good, let them know. Yeah. Let them know that he done something good, and let them know that if he if he if he if he walks hard, he'll he'll um he can go anywhere. And I think people took a lot from that because I was at a high level at that stage. You know what I mean? And I could have been a dickhead and walked around with a big ego saying I'm the best and stuff like that. But I I didn't. I just I'm a, I'm a I am a people person and I do my very best for anyone that walks in my gym or if if somebody looks for help. If I can do it, I will definitely do it. And and I'll do it with no hidden agenda. No, I'll do it because that's a it's a good thing to do and I believe if you do good things and, and and you help people along the way, you never know. You might need their help along the way yeah, as well. And I stand by that because the reason why when people walk in the door, not not I, I would be the same to a person, but we make an extra effort. Like when guys like King Kelly were walking in and we were down there, yeah. I was kind of doing what you did to me. So you could yeah. you showed me. Yeah, and I see that from 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 all the other boys like Chris and Cotton and Adam and and Queely and and. Um, Mul PR and and Ash and all of these people, all of the people that were around there, Brian Moore and so many of them, all at that time, because I was forced there, I I I would always say, look, Paddy Jesus, that little that triangle game that you're playing, that's that whole guy game is unbelievable. Keep working on it and keep doing it. Oh, Chris, man, your your kicking game is unbelievable because just broke my arm. <laughs> oh, Carl, Carl, once you get somebody on the wall, they ain't getting off the wall, no, no matter who it is. You're not getting off the wall, Arton. That style of fighting is not. It's not seen. People will come in and try and land on you, and because of the way you fight, they'll miss and you'll crack them. I, I would. I would see the good, good qualities that every fighter would have, and I would let them know. And 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 I think that might have gave a lot of people confidence. But I can see them doing that in their gyms like you're doing that in your gym you were doing that with the next generation of fighters and you took over the MMA program of John's 
and I'd be listening to people oh Paddy's brilliant but he, he can see what I'm good at and he's addressing it and he's letting me know and he's he's helping me develop it and that was something that I did when I was oh, with, I, with I, all of I yours. got a lot of that from you we yeah yeah you and I, 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 but I think that that's people need to hear that they need to hear why they're going right not, not, not where they're going wrong all, all the time. Yeah, yeah, you need yeah. to address your mistakes, but you know if somebody's doing something good and and, and it's like it's a good style or whatever, you know tell them it's good and help them compliment. And you know if you have anything to offer, let them like offer it to them. They it may work, it may not work. Like it's the same with when I work with Connor, I offer shots. Some of the shots work, some of them don't work. Yeah, and the same when I do stuff with any anyone that I pad, I don't I don't say this is the way you do it and this is the way I want you to do it. I might do that as for you when their kids are young and and mold them into a, into into a style, uh, and then when they're seventeen or eighteen, based on their personality, it'll change a little bit. But when they come in and they have a bit of experience and this is the type of style you are, I'll offer shots if we walk on them. If they walk, they walk. If they don't walk, they don't walk. And we throw them away. And then we go back and we, we, we figure out new shots. You know what I mean? Well, that, that is the fixing process. And if you don't approach it that way, you won't mm, last. Won't yeah. you? Have you got some questions there? Uh, Mano's monologue here. Um, yeah, I'm standing in for um, Robin's roundup this week. He has the shits. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we, we asked last week for a few of your followers. Oh, yeah, so on the Lima app, uh, even, even for this one as well, if you want to if you want a voice comment there, uh, a message under it, we'll play it on the, on the next one. And, and whoever mm. I have in that time, we'll, we'll try and answer. You're just lucky that Roddy's going to help me uh, answer these ones. So yeah, yeah. Brilliant, we'll go with the first one anyway. Oh, just get it now. Hi guys, it's Robin here. Robin from Robin's Roundup. I'm a producer on No Shame. <laughs> it was at that point Robin realized that Paddy didn't know who he was. <laughs> I'm only messing. Of course he knows who I am. But look, I'm really, really sorry I couldn't make the shoot today. I'm currently in Belfast. The basketball's on this weekend and I'm just recording my yeah. and training here. I couldn't get out of the shoot, unfortunately, because it's been scheduled for a long time and it had to be moved to the Thursday. Yeah. But it was genuinely good because I'm a massive Owen Roddy fan. I hey. genuinely mean that. Like, I love the, the one and vlog only. series uh, you do for all the fights, particularly the Mayweather one. I think, you know, you're training the greatest fighter of a generation for the biggest fight ever, maybe. And through it all, through the 24-7 hard work, you did it all with a smile on your face and mm. that's what it's all about really at the end of the day hey, if me and my mates was ever in a situation like that I'd like to think that that's how we'd handle it you know, just enjoying ourselves having a crack and that's what it's all about as I said mm. so look I feel bad for not being there so I wanted to get own a present mm. so Shane if you look in that bag there beside you and reach in, there's a surprise ah, there. Oh, Reese's! I don't want to bleed and die. If you want to give that to Owen. Oh, I'll have to break it. It's a Reese's I'll... peanut butter cup. Uh -huh. I really you a fan. I love it. I got one for Paddy as well. So he doesn't choke me out next time I see him. <laughs> and Shane, I got you one as well. <laughs> and also, yeah, yeah. Cheers yeah, for yeah, doing the camera yeah. work. Hey. So that's pretty much it, guys. Oh, yeah, I do have one question for Owen. Whose idea was it to wear those uh, suits out for the Mayweather fight? I reckon it was the best dressed corner I've ever seen. Uh, in, so anyway, in, look, genuinely good. Couldn't see you today, Owen, like big fan. And yeah. hopefully you'll come back on the show so I can meet you again face to face in person. Definitely, definitely. Cheers, will. guys. Looking forward to listening to the show. Oh, the show most definitely, but, there you um, go, so. yeah. oh god, yeah. So I had an anxiety attack when I seen this week. <laughs> right, because you know, I'm not I, I wouldn't be flashed like that. And I would be paranoid, like people would be laughing at me wearing that stuff, right? So we went up, it was it was um Connor's um Sukoi or his partner now, uh, um David August. David August, yeah. He was like, Let's go, let's do something different. And he wouldn't tell us what was going on at all until the day before. That freaked me out. Right. And I was like, I just want to play, I just want a pair of tracksuit pants and t-shirts. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's all I want. And then he gave me this, 
these slacks and the suit and I was like oh my god and I looked in the mirror and I was like it looks like it looks like I'm going to the to snooker world championships honest to god because I had a little black band on my arm and all I was like it's, I'm, I'm, it's basically going to the crucible final I'm, 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 I'm going playing snooker and I started getting panicked I was like oh god no but like then then like Connor was like, he says, I think it looks rapid. Nobody's ever done that like that. And I, I, the more I thought about it, I was like, you know what, fuck it. It's once in a lifetime. It looks slick. It's not appropriate. and It wasn't that practical, you know, jumping in and out of the, out of the ring. But yet, August made the, 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 the uh, he made it in material that was a little bit flexible and stuff like that. But yeah, at first I I I was I, I was a bit anxious. But then when I look back, we did look we looked fairly slick. Like ah, you know what I mean. Well. You know, I still have that. Now. Well, I do wear that out out for out every now and then. Every you know what I mean. Gaff you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I'm down in the old snooker hall and body one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that was it. Great. Hey, what? Just one more, because um, mm. you've you've had a great chat. Um, right. Robin brought up something to do with conspiracy theories. The last two episodes, we'll stick on that theme. Uh, you might have heard Eddie Alvarez going on about the flat earth theory. No, we haven't. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sure you've heard of a guy called Elon Musk. Yep. Uh, he's probably the Leonardo da Vinci of our generation, but yeah. he wrote on Twitter, um, during I think it was during the week, uh, why is there no flat Mars society directly to the flat earth society? Right. And the reply was, hi Elon, thanks for the question. Unlike the earth, Mars has been observed to be round. We hope you have a fantastic day. So, what's your thoughts on oh, that reply? God, <laughs> the the yeah, world's I'm, fucked, lads. Like, That's yeah. really straight. The world's I, fucked. I, 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 I love, I love listening to all these crazy theories and stuff like that. Um, yeah, people. I just people. Th- I think people just have too much time on their hand. And I swear to God, fair play to the, fair play to the lads that come up with these ideas, because they put the craziest stuff out there. They stick it on YouTube, and it gets millions and millions of viewers and they have monetized that video and they're making cash on it and then they'll do another one and stick a sponsor on it and make loads more and the more ridiculous you make it you're always going to have two sides you're always going to have people that will, will, will find some sort of they'll rationalize it somehow and then you'll find educated human beings that will tell you how stupid it is do you know what mm. I mean but yeah it's great flat earth and you know Illuminati and you know crab people and all of this <laughs> crazy stuff it's great the mermaid stuff and yeah, all that that's like, mad it's deadly it but is, like, man. you know what leave them to it like, that's yeah. what we say yeah, as well look, look, we wouldn't abuse it. somebody over being being yeah. mental like that you know what I mean but it literally is it confuses the whole the whole world she's yeah. confused on yeah. what's right what's wrong what's flat what's round yeah I, I, I'd say as well don't be wait, like I mean don't waste your time I always just live in a moment yeah, yeah don't waste yeah. your time on on what potentially is or could happen or, or what has happened in the past because what's happened in the past is it's nothing but a, a memory and what 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 what's happening? What's potentially going to happen in the future is nothing but an idea in your brain. What's happening now is what's happening now. So just chill there and, and embrace what's going on and enjoy it. You you're know on your I mean? way. You're on your way to the, to, the, to the little bit in the future. Yeah, the new ideas. Yeah. Perfect. That's it. And TKO. So, also, uh, thanks for listening again. So if you want to tune into TKO, download the Lima app on it uh, on the App Store and uh, and catch out some extra footage there. But nice and ready for yeah, having yeah, I enjoyed you. That. that was deadly, you man. OG really motherfucker. Yeah, man. Be good, man. Thank, Thank you. you very much.